Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a mission to become the world's greatest tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about diffraction grading, which is similar to the single and the double slit experiment, but it's going to be slightly different. So first, if we were talking about a double slit experiment, the picture looks something like this, where light is coming in as a wave. It diffracts, which basically means changes shape, at both of these slits right here. And because we have these intersecting lines, it means that we're going to have a diffraction pattern, which basically means constructive and destructive interference. And you get some kind of pattern on the back wall that looks something like this. A series of, we call them bright fringes and dark fringes, which are the spaces in between. So this is the double slit experiment. Now let me show you what diffraction grading looks like, because it's pretty similar. So now imagine I have a three-dimensional space here, and the light's coming in like a laser beam, and it's going to hit this little square here, and this square has a bunch of vertical lines through it. As a matter of fact, it has so many lines, and they're so close together that you cannot see them with the naked eye, but they're there. And what ends up happening is the light passes through this square, and then on a back wall somewhere behind this diffraction grating, you get another set of bright fringes, as you can see here. And if you don't understand what's going on here, I get it, I'm a bad artist, but all you need to recognize is that it's very similar to the double slit experiment. And whichever way the diffraction grating lines go, in other words, these lines in the diffraction grating are vertical, they are up and down, then the interference pattern will be the opposite way. As we can see, this interference pattern points left to right, and they will always be perpendicular to each other. But honestly, that's not even the important part of diffraction grading, at least not in my opinion. The important thing, of course, is the equations, which I will give you now. So first we need to talk about N. N is called the diffraction grading, and it is simply a measure of lines per meter. So for instance, in this made up example I just did, let's say this is one meter, you can literally count the lines, which is normally not possible, but you know, just to play along here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six lines. So the diffraction grading would be six in this example, six lines per meter. If they ever give you units other than meters, so for instance, centimeters or millimeters, you do have to convert that to meters. That's extremely important. And another equation we have for N is that n is equal to 1 over d, or you could write d equals 1 over n, that's also correct. But what is d? d is the distance between the individual slits of your diffraction grating. And because you have a distance between slits, this can essentially be modeled the exact same way as a Young's double slit experiment. In other words, we see that the formula for diffraction grating is literally the same equation we had for Young's double slit experiment. Pretty cool. And in case you forget, and we need to talk about what these variables are, we already know what d is, it's the distance between the slits. Sine theta, that's the angle between your maximums or minimums, depending on the problem. m is, I like to say, the number of bright fringes. And so for instance, if I scroll back up to my original picture, and I look at this pattern right here, the middle one is always m equals zero. You always start counting at zero. Then the next one's m equals one and m equals two. And the same thing goes on the other side, m equals one and m equals two. It's the number of bright fringes. Now what's interesting, and this usually tricks up a lot of students, is that the spaces in between are called the dark fringes, and they also have an m value. You're gonna see me call it m equals 0.5, and same thing on the other side, m equals 0.5. But most textbooks don't call it this. Most textbooks say m plus one half because they use m as the whole numbers. But personally, I think that's confusing. I think this makes way more sense. And if you use context clues, you can even say that this one right here between one and two is gonna be m equals 1.5. And the same thing is true on the other side. And so that's what I like to do. That's what I'm gonna be doing in this video today. And then the only other variable we need to talk about is lambda. Lambda is the wavelength. Usually they give us the wavelength or we're solving for it using this equation 
c equals lambda times f, where c is the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the eighth, and f is the frequency in hertz. And with that, that's all we need to know for the diffraction grading. Now let's do a couple of example problems to hone in on our skills. A diffraction grating produces the first order bright fringe at an angle of one degree. Light with wavelength 520 nanometers was used. Find the distance between the slits and the diffraction grating in lines per meter. Okay, so the first thing I would say is d sine theta equals m lambda. And we basically have all the variables we need to solve here. If they want the distance between the slits, they're asking me to solve for d. They told me the angle was one degree. M is the number of bright fringes, since it says the first order bright fringe, that's going to be M equals one. And finally, lambda, the wavelength, that's 520 nanometers. But I do have to be careful because nanometers is 10 to the minus ninth. And so then all I have to do is divide both sides by the sine of one degree. And that will get me a distance of 2.98 times 10 to the minus fifth meters. So there's my distance between the slits, very small distance, very difficult to see with the naked eye. And now the second question is find the diffraction grating. So luckily for that, all I have to do is n equals one over d. So n equals one over the answer I just got a minute ago. You could also accomplish this by just typing in the negative one power button in your calculator, which finds the reciprocal. But either way, we'll get an answer of 33,500, and that's lines per meter, which is a lot. That's a lot of lines. And yeah, that's basically it. Now we're gonna do one more. It will be slightly harder, but let's see if you can solve this one on your own. So here we go. A diffraction grating of 600 lines per millimeter is used along with light with frequency four times 10 to the 14th to create a diffraction pattern find the angle to the second order dark fringe. So before you try this one on your own, I do wanna give you two hints. Number one, this is per millimeter. I'm gonna to have to convert that diffraction grating to meters. And the second hint is, it's the second order dark fringe, which means we have to be careful with what value we use for M. So go ahead, try this on your own. And when you think you've got it, or if you give up, then unpause the video and look at my solution. Okay, so. First, with n, n is 600 lines per millimeter. If I want to convert that, all I have to do is multiply by the conversion factor with millimeters in the numerator and meters in the denominator, because this allows me to cancel out the millimeters. But how many millimeters are in a meter? Well, hopefully you know this. 1,000, or 10 to the third, millimeters are in one meter. So I'm essentially just multiplying this by 1,000 which ends up being six times 10 to the fifth power. The next thing, I should probably find D, the distance between the slits, which is just one over N. So one over six times 10 to the fifth power, that's gonna be 1.67 times 10 to the minus sixth, and that's in meters. And then finally, I can plug into D sine theta equals M lambda where d is 1.67 times 10 to the minus six. Sine theta is what I'm solving for. M, so it's the second order dark fringe. So remember the dark fringes are all the 0.5 values like this. And if I want the second order dark fringe, I need to use the second dark fringe, which is 1.5. And if it was the first order, it would have been 0.5. And if it was the third order, it would have been 2.5 etc. So in other words, m is 1.5. And finally, lambda, which is also not easy to find, because they gave me the frequency 4 times 10 to the 14th, which means I need to solve for lambda using the equation c equals lambda times f. So that's 3 times 10 to the 8th equals lambda times my frequency 4 times 10 to the 14th. So then lambda is going to end up equaling, I have to divide both sides by four times 10 to the 14th. And if you do it correctly, you get 7.5 times 10 to the minus seventh, and that's meters. And that's exactly what's gonna go right here in my equation. So then if I wanna solve for sine theta, gotta divide that 1.67 times 10 to 
times 10 to the minus 6 on both sides. And if I plug this in a calculator, then I'll get sine of theta equals 0.675. And then the last thing I need to do is, if I want to solve for theta, then I need to take the inverse sine of both sides, thus giving me an answer of 42.5 degrees. And that's the answer. So hopefully that made sense. If not, you can always rewatch the solution any number of times. And if you still have questions, please post them in the comments below. If you want to see my videos on single slit or double slit, I'm going to have them in the description of this video. And with that, I bid you adieu, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.